Hello and welcome. I'm Nick. I'm Shaisi's Domain. From Top Notch Sports. And today we're going to be breaking down the Cincinnati Bengals draft class for this just past draft that just happened a little bit over a week ago now, or a week or two ago. It's been a while. Uh, you know, it, it's it was all around pretty dang good draft. Now, Shaisi's Domain, I got to ask, okay? You had a very pretty dang good mock draft in, in our event that we had, right? You brought in some players. Uh, I believe one that you brought in was Dalton Kincaid and, and, you know, a tight end. You brought in people like Israel Abanakanda. For the most part, you guys did bring in a running back. You did bring in a wide receiver. But one position you did not attack at all was that tight end position. First things first, what do you think about that? Uh, so it wasn't like the board didn't fall, right? It was just that Cincinnati wasn't interested in a tight end. So I feel like they kind of showed that, like, they trust the guys that they have. Uh, they went and brought in Irv Smith, who's still – he's only 24, super, like, high-ceiling guy, really athletic. And so it's like, if they trust him, they're getting paid a lot of money to know what they're doing. So I'm like, I just got to trust that they know what they're doing. And obviously, you know, it's worked out. Got back-to-back AC Championship games to show for it. So Absolutely. And again, like I said, I do like you guys attacking and tight end of the draft. So that shows that I like your draft too. But again, I understand they got Irv Smith Jr., like you said, real young guy and stuff. So before we even go any further and break down each pick, let me start with this. Plug in your page and let them know a little bit about what you do. Oh, yeah. Shicey's Domain on Instagram. I am uh, Bengals News and Bengals Edits. Uh, just kind of, you know, do it for fun. But I also try to, like, make sure it's like Bengals first. We all have, like, fun while I'm doing it. So, yeah. All right, cool. So let's go now with the first one. Okay, the first pick, 28th overall, edge rusher Miles Murphy. What's your take on him? Six foot four, 268, 33-inch reach. Had a really good pro day. What's your take on him? Yeah, so I didn't watch a lot of film on him leading up to the draft just because I didn't think he'd be there, right? So I was like, I knew that since then I was pretty high on him, but I didn't expect him to be there, so I didn't know a lot about him. But I went and watched the film, and right, he's a guy that, again, a uh, high-motor guy, guys at Cincinnati that the defensive line coach really likes. Uh, our defensive coordinator said that he's going to be in the rotation right away. And so when you know, like maybe five sacks this year coming off the edge, I, I really like the pick. Yeah, I mean, this is a guy, to me, he has all the ability in the world physically. Like, he's physically gifted. Again, I want to go back 6'4", 268, 33-inch arms. The arms are about, you know, I feel like probably right around average for, uh, you know, edge rushers. So that's not crazy, crazy. But – I mean, big guy, you guys do have Trey Hendrickson. You do have Sam Hubbard. I like both of them. I know that you said they underperformed slightly the last year, didn't they? Yeah, just a little bit. So, I mean, the only thing for me was, was this the biggest need right now for you guys? That's the only thing I questioned. Great size, good bend to the hips, great flexibility to get around the tackles. Real interesting prospect. I love his size. I love his physicals. The only thing I dislike about him is that sometimes it takes a wide loop around to get to the quarterback. He's my sixth-ranked edge rusher. Uh, you know, Anderson, Tyree Will, uh, Wilson were two guys, and Lucas Van Ness were all taken before him. Those are three of the six guys that, you know, I had, you know, going before him that did go before him. The only guys I liked a little bit better than him was Felix and Yudike Uzama, who you saw the, the Chiefs take later on that draft uh, in that round, and B.J. Ojolari, who got taken in a whole different round. But, you know, I like to pick a lot of potential here. If the Bengals can coach this guy up, I think it could be a phenomenal pick. Again, the only part I do question is, was it a great knee pick? So this individual pick, I went with a B- minus for the Bengals. Let's go to the next guy now. Uh, you go out now, you take cornerback DJ Turner. What did you think about him? Speed, speed, speed. My goodness, our secondary is so fast now. You're like, we can't beat you physically. We're just going to like get to the ball as quickly as possible and pick it off. Absolutely. I mean, like you just said, fast. I mean, this guy's 5'11", 178, ran a 42640. I mean, again, that's 99th percentile for probably all positions, but especially at the cornerback position, that's out of this world. I mean, for those of you that play Madden, that's a 99 speed, okay? There's no there's no question asked. The only thing about this guy is he's in the 5th percentile for weight, you know, at the cornerback position, 42nd percentile for height, and 26th percentile for arm length, which means that they're all below average. You know, 50 means average. He's below in all those three categories. This is one of my top guys. You know, you guys get him all the way. This is pretty dang late, you know, to grab him at 60. Uh, you know, he's one of my top guys, you know, and it's not just speed. I love speed, but it's not just speed. He's my fourth-ranked corner, you know, coming off the board at 60 here. We had a lot of guys that went before him. This is a really good pick for the Bengals. I feel like it fills in a need. I, I gave this an A+, plus, an A-plus written all over the board. The only guy I had ranked higher than him that went all the way in the fourth round was Kaylee Ringo. 
who I really like, and I can't believe he fell that far. But again, DJ Turner, my fourth-ranked guy, I feel like he was very underrated on most people's boards. And I, I think it's a steal of a pick for the Cincinnati Bengals. What, Eddie? What, Eddie, sir? Next guy, okay, you go out, you draft a guy named Jordan Battle, my number one ranked safety, okay? Six foot one, two oh nine, four five five forty. What'd you think about him? I agree. He was also my number one safety. I was I was so surprised that he fell. I missed the fact that he was still on the board. I thought he went earlier. And so when they drafted him, I was super, super excited. I feel like he's basically Von Bell, but more athletic, right? And obviously Von Bell went to Carolina, so you need him. You need someone who could fill that hole. I know that they brought in Nick Scott, but I feel like Battle will be He's basically Von Bell, who's just a little bit more athletic. Absolutely. I mean, again, this is a guy for me that, I, I again, I'm ecstatic that he fell all the way to 95. Uh, I, I Look, I, there, there's some safety that got drafted way before this guy. The, you guys got two A-plus draft grades for me. I don't hand out – you know I don't hand out A-plus. is like they're nothing, okay? When you get a guy this good this late, that's a great pick, especially in a position for need. You know, you guys got, you know, a, a decent secondary, but man, have you just added to it now by adding DJ Turner and Jordan Battle. You take Daxton Hill, who was my top cover safety in last year's draft class, and you bring in Jordan Battle, who's my top safety in this year's draft class, plus you add DJ Turner, my fourth-ranked cornerback. Hell, you guys are bringing a really good cornerback and safety room to the Cincinnati Bengals. This is a great pick. I feel like this guy can do everything. He's not just a cover guy. He's not a guy that's just going to come up and hit you. He can do everything. He has great size. Again, I, I don't hand out A-pluses like they're nothing. You guys have two A-plus picks in your last three picks. So, the, honestly, my least favorite pick so far was a Miles Murphy pick. But, again, I don't even hate that one. All right, that's him. Let's go to the next guy now. Charlie Jones, wide receiver, Purdue. What did you take on him? Uh, So, I'm from Nebraska, so I watch a lot of Big Ten football. And he was – he had the most contested catches in all of college football. So, obviously, this is a guy who's like, he's going to go up and get the ball. I know he's not huge. Uh, He ran like four four one, so he's not necessarily the fastest wide receiver in the league, but like super consistent guy. Uh, Bengals fans are already saying that like if we develop him right, he could become like the next Cooper Cup. That kind of thing. I don't think that his ceiling's quite that high, but I feel like, you know, it's kind of like a Tyler Boyd replacement, obviously, with you have to pay Higgins, Chase, and Burrow. You Boyd's probably the odd man out there. So this is it's probably just a Boyd replacement. He plays a lot like Tyler Boyd. Yeah. I mean, to me, I like this kid when I was watching him. And one thing that, you know, I want to make sure I mention here for you guys, he also adds a lot of returnability for you guys. He was a return man back in college. I remember watching his tape. I said I think he may be one of the best return receivers I've seen so far in the entire draft, you know, for this draft specifically. He is really good at gaining yards after the catch. He can take a screen pass and turn it into big yards, but he could but he could also be utilized as a deep threat. He has a really nice double move. I was able to watch him run some nice routes, unlike some other receivers. So I like his route running. He fights for some extra yards also on occasion. So this is a guy, like you said, I don't know again, saying Cooper Cup, like you said, it's not super realistic, but saying that this guy could play a huge role for you guys, and he has a speed to burn him deep. He has good route running ability. I like this guy a lot. You know, I really do. Now, was he my top-ranked receiver? No. He was my 18th-ranked receiver. You get him in the fourth round, I gave it a B. I don't think it's the biggest position to need for you guys, but again, I think you've got a really good player that can make some, you know, a presence in the return game, especially in year one, and possibly find his way onto the field a lot in year two. Like you said, when Tyler Boy might walk. So, all right, that's that. That's him. Anything else on Charlie Jones you want to mention? Nope. Again, I feel like you're just you're hoping you're building for the future, really, because it's the same thing with what they do in the defense. How do you kind of accommodate for the fact that you have a lot of guys to pay? You get young on defense, right? And so that's kind of what they did here. You get a young wide receiver who can hopefully produce, you know, in two three years, 
get him my kind of on a Tyler Boyd contract a little bit cheaper and then, you know, let Higgins and uh, Chase roam free on the outside and then have him in the slot. Absolutely. Absolutely. And like I said, you know, your next pick is another one that I'm kind of a fan of. You know, I lowered him down. I, I had him ranked really high. Then I lowered him down, lowered him down. But he's not the highest on my board, but I love this guy's tape. And that's running back Chase Brown from Illinois. What do you think about him? This is my favorite pick. I feel like you look at Isaiah Pacheco last year for Kansas City coming in big time. Running back is a, it's kind of a funny position where it's kind of like you can find starting caliber guys late in the draft, right? And obviously, again, come from Nebraska, Big Ten football guy. I've I've seen a lot of him. He's super shifty, super quick, really. He's a really good receiving back. He's also, from what, I can, what I've seen on film, looks like he's a pretty decent blocker. So he's basically Samaj P. Ryan, but a better runner, right? So again, what they did in this draft is they went and kind of replaced the guys that they lost. Now, Chase Brown is my favorite pick from us. I feel like he gives just another level of explosiveness because Mixon is just getting older, getting to the age where running backs start to decline. Speed's taking a dip, and I feel like Chase Brown can come in and be, you know, kind of that burner at the running back position. That's exactly what I think he'll be, that burner, because he's fast, four four three forty. I mean, that's one of the top speeds for running backs. I, I mean, I know that sounds crazy because we think some guys are running four threes, four twos. Running backs don't run usually that fast. You know, a lot of the running backs are usually in that four three, four four, four five range for the love of God. So this is a guy that runs four four three. That's really fast. Five nine two oh nine. You know, biggest position I need, no, but you definitely needed another guy to fill in that Samaj P. Ryan role. Now, I did like Samaj P. Ryan coming out of the draft. This is a totally different style of running back, you know, with Chase Brown. Uh, you know, P. Ryan, his film was, I'm going to run you over coming out of college. And, I mean, the dude had, like, 70 bench reps, too. Chase Brown, honestly, he wasn't far off. He did very good on the bench as well, you know, in the 88th percentile for bench when Samaj P. Ryan was, you know, 90, 98th percentile. So, again... Samaj P. Ryan was just a monster, you know, build of a guy. Chase Brown is fast as hell. Again, 85th percentile at the 40-yard dash, which means that he's 35% higher than, you know, the average Joe in that. All-around athletic freak. I like this guy a lot. I said he has breakaway speed and good hands out of the backfield. He has pretty good elusiveness and a slippery runner. Considering he is fast and has elusiveness and can catch, he could be a you know a threat on any given play. So this is a guy you can use on first down, third down, doesn't matter what. He's gonna be you know a player on your guys' team. And again, you know I I gave this a low ball. I gave it a B minus, but because I had some guys ranked higher than him. But honestly, looking at it from this point of view, you're bringing in a guy that you know can do everything and gonna fill in that P run and roll very well. You know I did have some guys higher still that were still on the board. But again, I like this pick for the Bengals, and we'll, we'll wait and see what happens with them. Um, all right, so that's that pick. Let's go to the next one now. Andre Ayashovis, uh, wide receiver from Princeton, 206. What's your take on this kid? Uh, from what I've heard, it seems like he was a really impressive track star, like a dual athlete in college. And so, you know, at like later rounds, you're kind of looking for athletic freaks, kind of raw athletic freaks, so you can hopefully, uh, you know, kind of, uh, use their ability and kind of teach like techniques and stuff like that. So eventually they can like fit your roster. And I feel like uh, the DBs at the senior bowl said that he was one of the best wide receivers that they ever played against. And obviously you have like pretty good defensive backs there. And that's, that's not like a small thing. That's a pretty big compliment for him. It's, you know, it's just speed burn. Like he's the fastest wide receiver in our receiving room now. Jamar in like a four, three, nine or something. So he's definitely the fastest there now. And again, if like if he does become something and like we'd be talking like steal the draft here if he does like end up becoming what Cincinnati is hoping that he can become. Yeah, I mean, for his size and speed combination, it, it's pretty special. Six three. I got him listed down at a four four three forty two oh five. Um, he's a bigger guy. The thing is about him was I I wanted to love this guy, you know, when I scouted him. I was like, this guy has a size and a speed. I love size and speed. That's like my two favorite things to look at. But the only thing was is that there's still a lot left to be desired on his tape. Now, again, like you said, th his peers might think differently. His peers might think he's really good. He could turn out to being great. Uh, you know, I said this kid has size and speed to be a top receiver in, at the next level and very well could be just based off his physicals. The issue that is that I see he does not high point the football. He's another one of these big guys. I just didn't see him go up and climb the ladder. Hopefully he'll do that because, again, just like Quentin Johnson. Quentin Johnson, who I have ranked as my number one receiver, didn't do that as well. So what really separates this guy and that guy? This guy's a sixth rounder. That guy was a first rounder. Honestly, 
They both have the same issue. I want to see them go up and climb the ladder. This guy could turn out to be better if he learns how to do it before Quentin Johnston does. And again, it wouldn't shock me if he could. Uh, if he could, you know, high point the football, then there's nothing he can't do. I want to see him be able to go up and grab one. The one great thing about him is that he's good at using his size. So this is a guy that can box out, use his size to his advantage. I just want to see him climb the ladder. If he can do that, this could be very well be the steal of the draft. And the guy that we're all like, how the hell did he fall to the sixth round? Big guy, fast as hell. I gave it a B plus pick again. I would even give it a higher if you guys didn't, you know, this is what your second receiver, your draft, plus you got Higgins, plus you got Chase, plus you got Boyd, you know, so it's, it, but again, you can never have enough receivers. So I, I'm a big fan of this pick. And again, we'll wait and see. All right, I'll, I'll put this one next one, punter. I don't I don't watch the punters. Brad, Brad Robin, punter from Michigan. What's your take on him? Uh, so Brad Robbins is, he doesn't punt it necessarily farther than Chrisman does, but what he does is he punts it higher, right? Again, like I said, in the mock draft, I was at the AFC Championship, and that last punt that he had, it went like 58 yards, like into the wind. That's impressive, but like the hang time was nothing. It was like a missile. It was like low to the ground, but it was flying. And so then like the Bengals uh, gunners just couldn't get down there in time to uh, tackle more. And so then more went for what, like 35 yards or something like that to get them into range. Uh, where they had potential to go on and win the game, and ultimately they did, right? So if you have a punter like that whose hang time was like it's like eight tenths of a second longer than Chrisman, and also he had zero touchbacks, yeah, a season from the statistics I saw, that's that's impressive. Yeah, for sure. And like I said, this is a guy that, like I said, I mean, we'll wait and see. This could very well. I mean, do you think he wins a starting job? Yeah, probably. I know since I was like really high, and you don't spend like well, he was the first punter taken or something like that, maybe second. You don't spend that high of a pick unless on a like a punter unless you think he can win the starting job. For sure. And last but not least, DJ Ivy, cornerback Miami. I didn't get a chance to watch him either. What do you think? I watched a little bit of film on him. Again, like I said, you just kind of take raw athletic freaks and hope you can kind of teach them some technique and stuff like that. And that's why I see with Ivy, right, since I had some injuries in the cornerback room. So, I mean, you're hoping that he doesn't have to see the field year one. But if he does – um like, I'd be okay. I feel like uh, he was pretty good in zone, zone coverage, which is what Sensei runs fairly often. He was he was solid. Again, he wasn't using the ACC, right? So I don't, he wasn't going up against, like, super, super high caliber guys. Uh, I mean, I don't know. He looked he looked fine on film. He didn't look like he was giving up big plays. His technique looked pretty sound. Uh, he was a fast guy, quick guy, pretty instinctive. So I personally, I felt like it was, again, like a seventh round pick. That's what you're looking for. You're just looking for an athletic guy. You can kind of just hope to teach up to the next level for sure and again like i mean there's a seven round pick you're just hoping that this guy you know is a role player that fits the roster i mean if you can get that that's a steal doesn't even be no damn superstar so overall you guys had a pretty dang good draft for me i mean let me ask you first how are you are you happy about this draft and what would be your draft grade if you had to handle one uh i love the draft i graded it an a i think there are only three teams higher that i have i have the eagles the steelers and the giants out of them i think they had the fourth best draft you look like necessarily the guys weren't necessarily the best on the board, but they drafted for like team needs and like scheme fits super well. I think that in terms of like scheme fits, they had the best draft out of any team, right? Like Philadelphia and Pittsburgh obviously just went out and drafted dogs, right? Guys who are just like super talented. Cincinnati went and drafted guys that fit like the character role and also like the schemes. So they so I thought that they did that super, super well. For sure. I mean, the only thing I, you know, I'm I'm right around that B plus to A minus range. I'm probably going to go with an A minus, though, because I'm leaning that way. DJ Turner is a top guy of mine. Uh, you know, you also go out and you bring in a guy, like you said, in uh, Miles Murphy, who who is, I mean, he felt, he wasn't supposed to fall that far, but he did. I think a lot of the concerns I saw also team saw, so that's why he fell that far. But again, he's an athletic freak. Uh, you bring in Jordan Battle, my top ranked safety. You know, it, you just had pick after pick. It was pretty damn good. You know, all around, it was a pretty damn good draft for you guys. I like it a lot. I think that again, this team could go uh pretty far with the raw. I mean, what what really you didn't lose anything for the most part, right? This offseason, did you lose any pieces? Besides Bates and Bell, which I mean that's why they drafted Dax Hill, Dax Hill last year to kind of replace Bates, and then they went and signed. You know, Nick Scott to hopefully replace Bell, but then when Battle fell out of them, they went, they snagged him really quickly. So I feel like you replace Bates and Bell with Dax Hill and Jordan Battle, which if Dax Hill is up to the first round grade, he'll, he'll probably be just as good as Bates, hopefully. And then obviously Battle, who's my number one safety and your number one safety, you can play 
you play like everywhere in the field. And so that's that's kind of what Von Bell did, but I feel like Battle is a higher ceiling than Bell did. So if you look as we lost, I mean Hayden Hurst and then you film with Irv Smith. And other than that, we didn't really lose anyone. Yeah. Again, I I really, really think this draft is pretty dang good. I I, I like you mentioned Bates and Bell. I like both of them too a lot. I really do. But I mean, you took my like number you know, one safeties in both of your draft classes. So, again, I, I'm a huge fan of this defense. The secondary is really getting tough. And the offense, again, it, it's always been potent with Joe Burrow. All you did was add weapons. The only knock I have in this entire draft was is that this was one of the best years to draft tight ends, and they didn't take one, which I, I, I wish they did. Rather than taking two receivers, you know, and two corners and, you know, this, that, I wish they just attacked the tight end position once because there were so many guys that they could have used and, and I think could have been competing for the starting job over Irv Smith. But again, I'm very happy. Is there anything else that you want to mention? No, I feel like since then just did a really good job of having the board fall to them and not reaching, right? Like there was at one point, like I wanted Coons in like round four. So I couldn't sit down at Old Dominion or whatever. And, yep. you know, like every team re- like passed him until what the Jets took him with like what, 221 or whatever. Yeah. Wherever you went. And so obviously again, like I said, since I just showed that they trust their tight end room. Like so it wasn't like the tight end board didn't fall to them. Like no Kincaid went f- before since I picked around one, but like Michael Mayer was right there in round two, Darnell Washington. I know that he fell a little bit, but still like and they even had the pick before Pittsburgh when he went what ninety three since I yeah. originally had ninety two and they traded out of that pick. So they just showed that like, hey, we don't we don't value tight ends as much. And obviously when you have uh, Higgins, Chase Boyd, and if Jones turns out to be something, he could be on the field more often than Irv Smith, right? So they just don't just don't value the tight end position as much as I feel like other teams around the league do. Well, absolutely. I, I 100% agree. Uh, but still, man, it would have been special if, if <laughs> Darnell Washington was running around or blocking for Joe Mixon and Joe Burrow and then, you know, catching a 45-yard post route down the field. I mean, with Chase, Boyd, Higgins, uh, you know, oh man, it would have been special, but it is what it is. Very good draft. Anything, uh, mention your page one more time. Oh, uh, yeah, Shy Sister Man on Instagram. Okay, that's all from us. We'll see you guys soon. Peace. We are Built Better.